Bangladesh is voting in its 12th parliamentary elections, which Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina and her Awami League is expected to win. Principal opposition party, the Bangladesh Nationalist Party is boycotting the polls. The voter turnout has been low so far, with the Election Commission recording just 18.5% votes till 12 p.m. Over 100 foreign observers are present at different polling booths and across the country as we speak, the observers are inspecting polling stations to make sure that there are no cases of vote rigging, ballot stuffing and other electoral malpractices. Now, three member delegation from the Election Commission of India is also among the foreign observers in Dhaka at the moment and the United Nations says that it is also monitoring the elections closely. The International Medical Corps Humanitarian Group has opened a field hospital in Rafa and with a staff of around 200 health workers, the field hospital is all set to provide both outpatient and inpatient clinical care. Its facilities include two operating theatres plus maternity and emergency care services. Now, the field hospital also provides a psychological support to children and adults. Air raid sirens blared across northern Israel as Israel and Hezbollah militant group continued trading fire across Lebanon's border in one of the heaviest days of cross-border fighting in recent weeks. And the Iranian-backed Hezbollah group said that it launched more than 60 rockets at an Israeli military base. Hezbollah said in a statement that its strikes against Israel were an initial response to the assassination of one of Hamas leaders, Saleh al-Aruri, earlier in the week. Lebanon's Prime Minister Najib McCarthy said that any large-scale bombing in southern Lebanon would lead to a comprehensive explosion in the region. Israeli Army spokesperson Daniel Hakri has said that the Israeli Defense Forces have killed around 8,000 militants in northern Gaza. And he also added that the army has seized tens of thousands of weapons and millions of documents. And this comes as armed clashes erupted in West Bank's Janine following a raid by the Israeli army. Now, the Palestinian Health Ministry claims that six people have been killed this morning during an Israeli raid in the West Bank. On the other hand, Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu has said that the war against Hamas must not be stopped until Israel achieves three main objectives. First, eliminate Hamas. Second, return our hostages. And third, ensure that Gaza will no longer be a threat to Israel. Washington has once again dispatched its top diplomat to assess the situation surrounding the crisis in Gaza. U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken met with Greek Prime Minister and both the leaders expressed concerns over the growing humanitarian crisis in Gaza. And during the meet, the Prime Minister of Greece also expressed concerns about the risks of escalating tensions in West Asia and the repercussions for regional stability and security. Now, the Greek Prime Minister also said that the two countries could work together to help safeguard security in a turbulent region. And Blinken had earlier met Turkish President Recep Tayyip Erdogan and during the meet, Blinken stressed that West Asian nations need to use their influence over regional actors to ensure that the Gaza conflict is contained. EU foreign policy chief Joseph Borrell has warned that Lebanon could be drawn into a regional conflict if Israel-Hamas war widens. And during his visit to Lebanon, Borrell said that it is necessary to avoid a regional escalation of conflict in West Asia and also warned that regional conflict will not benefit anyone. Border violence at the Lebanon-Israel border has gradually intensified since Hezbollah initiated a pressure front against Israel in support of Hamas and Borrell called for a pause in the Israel-Gaza war and described the humanitarian situation in the besieged enclave as beyond catastrophic. Borrell also called on the international community to work towards a two-state solution.
As Moscow continues to escalate its onslaught on Kiev, a deadly Russian missile strike hit the eastern Ukrainian city on Saturday, which killed 11 people and injuring eight others. Now, Russian officials have not issued an official comment on the alleged attack. The attack comes a day after Moscow and said that it repelled a Ukrainian drone attack on Crimea. Now, pictures posted online by the regional governor shows a rescue squads working through the debris in the aftermath of the bombardment. Authorities claim that S-300 missiles had been used in the attacks with, with the main strike hitting the town and nearby villages. And this town is just 80 kilometers away from Donetsk city, around which some of the heaviest fighting on the front line is taking place. Senior Biden administration leaders, top Pentagon officials and members of Congress were unaware for days that Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin had been hospitalized. Now this, as Austin has taken responsibility for not disclosing his hospitalization to the top U.S. officials. The Defense Secretary is recovering from an unspecified medical concern and the news of Pentagon Chief's health came as a shock to the U.S. top brass. Now, the Defence Secretary was hospitalised on the 1st of January. However, the National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan and other senior White House aides were unaware of this until the 4th of January. And reports also say that the Congress was informed just 15 minutes before the press release by the Pentagon. Is anger in Israel is growing against the Netanyahu government and thousands of protesters have taken to the streets demanding the removal of Prime Minister Netanyahu and an end to the war in Gaza. Demonstrations took place at the Hapima Square with some blaming Netanyahu and other officials for Hamas attacks on October 7th. Meanwhile, in Jerusalem, people gathered in front of the house of the Israeli president to demand the release of captives held by Hamas. And protesters also held signs bearing images of hostages, their faces and messages such as quote-unquote, get them out of hell. Now this is seen as one of the major anti-government protests since the war began on October 7th. Protesters called for elections as they came out on the streets of Tel Aviv. Iran state media has released a video and that has said to have captured the moments of the twin blast that rocked the West Asian country last week. 91 people were killed in the explosions near the grave of slain Iranian commander Qasem Soleimani. And this video aired by Iranian state TV and released by security forces shows the second blast going off near a slow moving bus. Now the blasts were claimed by the Islamic State terror group and one suicide bomber is known to have carried out the first attack. And another bomber blew himself up just 20 minutes later. Now, the attacks took place in Kerman, which is about 820 kilometers southeast of Tehran. The top Maldivian government websites have been restored after they went inaccessible for several hours on Saturday. Now, the websites of the Maldivian President's Office, Country's Foreign Ministry and Tourism Ministry were down for several hours and the President's official account on the social media platform X reported the issue as a technical issue and said that they were working to resolve the snag. Now, other than this, the Maldivian government has remained tight-lipped about the glitch and the reason for the digital blackout remains uncertain. Former US President Donald Trump has mocked French President Emmanuel Macron by imitating his accent while speaking to his supporters in Iowa 
and Trump claimed that he threatened Macron to put a 100% tariff on wines and champagne imported from France to the US if the French didn't move the 25% tax they were planning to slap on US companies that were operating in Mexico. Now, the former president also mimicked Democratic President Joe Biden, who he's likely to face in a general election rematch in November. Alaska Airlines is temporarily grounding all its Boeing 737-9 aircrafts and this means a total fleet of 65 planes and this after a passenger plane with 177 people on board made an emergency landing and in the US state of Oregon shortly after takeoff, the plane landed safely after a window blew out mid-air leading to rapid cabin depressurization incident. However, the National Transportation Safety Board has said that the two seats next to the cabin panel that blew out were unoccupied. And in the wake of this blowout, India's aviation regulator has ordered all Indian airlines to carry out one-time inspection of all Boeing 737 carriers that are operating in the fleet. Indian Defence Minister Rajnath Singh is all set to embark on a three-day visit to the United Kingdom from Monday and this trip is seen as a significant step to the bilateral partnership in the spheres of defence between both the countries. Now, besides wide-ranging talks with his UK counterpart Grant Sharp, Singh is expected to inspect a ceremonial guard of honour and undertake visits to the memorials of Mahatma Gandhi and Dr. B. R. Ambedkar in London. And a community interaction with members of the Indian diaspora in the UK is also expected to be part of his three-day itinerary. Students in the capital city of India can enjoy their winter vacation for a couple of more days as all government and private schools in Delhi will remain closed for students from nursery to class 5th until January 12th due to prevailing cold weather conditions. Now, this announcement comes hours after the Delhi government retracted an order on the extension of winter vacation in schools within New Delhi. And schools in the national capital region of Noida and Greater Noida have also been ordered to stay shut until January 14, 2024. Cold to severe cold conditions are likely to continue over the northern states of Delhi, Punjab, Haryana and Rajasthan. An Indian student from Jharkhand's West Singbab district died in Italy for unknown reasons on the 2nd of January. And Ram Rob belongs to Jharkhand's West Singam district. And according to police, Rob went to Italy to study MBA and was living in a rented accommodation. A tornado touched down in downtown Fort on Saturday evening and there have been no reports of immediate injuries with only scattered power outages in some area and the tornado came amid a stormy weekend in South Florida and officials issued a warning across the county minutes before the twister was spotted. And more severe weather is possible in Florida in the coming days as another powerful storm moves across the eastern half of the country. Large swaths of the Midlands County of Nottingham's higher continue to be flooded following a powerful storm and a week of heavy rainfall. And the UK Environment Agency said that flooding impacts are expected to continue along parts of the River Trent, River Severn and River Thames for the next five days. Now, heavy rain caused major rivers to overflow on Friday as the government issued more than 300 flood warnings. And local authorities have said that this is the worst flooding Nottingham Tire has ever experienced since 2008. And colder temperatures are predicted for the next few days with the UK Health Security Agency issuing a yellow cold weather alert. The German Weather Service has announced the arrival of extreme cold weather in the northern part of the country and this comes as large areas of land remain covered in flood water 
And while the below freezing temperatures are expected to help the overloaded dikes hold back the water, experts have warned of the long-term impacts. Authorities have said that the cause of this intense flooding is due to the draining of the floodplains along the rivers. Orthodox Christians gather to celebrate Christmas Eve in Serbia, which is one of 16 majority Orthodox Christian nations where the church still uses the calendar, the Julian calendar, to mark Christmas in January. And the eve is marked with the burning of, an oak, of oak branches, which is known as Panjax. Romania celebrated Epiphany on Saturday and horses were decked in red ribbons and small bells were blessed in the small Romanian town. And local priests blessed the horses before a race to determine which villager owns the swiftest steed. And the blessing is thought to bring luck and protection in the coming year. Migrants at U.S.-Mexico border marked Epiphany with gifts and cake as they waited to apply for asylum and entry into the United States. A record number of migrants traveled across Central America and Mexico in 2023 and they aim to reach the United States fleeing poverty, violence, climate change and conflict. Now, The Epiphany, also known as the Three Kings Day, marks the day when three biblical wise men visited the infant Christ. The James Webb Telescope, which is the world's largest and most powerful space telescope, has captured some stunning images. Now, the telescope opened its huge mirror and arrived at its observation post 1 million miles from Earth in 2022. And the $10 billion observatory hurtled towards its destination 1.6 million kilometers away. And this is more than four times beyond the moon. Regulators in the U.S. are actively collaborating with exchanges to finalize filings detailing rule changes that are necessary for the approval of Bitcoin based on exchange-traded funds, ETFs. Now, the SEC is expected to make a decision on this by January 12th, marking the potential approval of the first Bitcoin-based ETF. And while multiple asset managers have sought permission to launch spot Bitcoin ETF since 2013, previous attempts were rejected due to concerns about market manipulation. Notably, 14 firms including BlackRock and Wisdom Tree submitted applications last year and are awaiting the decision. And the SEC, after years of uncertainty, is expediting the approval process and has requested written requests from issuers to accelerate this effective date for ETFs, a departure from the usual informal timing discussions with regulators. Apple is experiencing its worst start to the year, jeopardizing its position as the most valuable stock globally due to market capitalization. And the decline is attributed to investor concerns about increasing pressure on the company, with reports suggesting that the Justice Department is nearing an antitrust lawsuit against Apple. And this news led to a 0.4% drop in Apple's shares, marking its longest losing streak since October. And the company has lost approximately $177 billion in market value so far in the year, experiencing its largest percentage decline in the first week of January. Now, analysts cite a challenging macro environment in China, affecting iPhone demand as a factor contributing to this decline. Now, these losses have brought Apple's market value down to about $2.8 trillion, approaching Microsoft's $2.7 trillion. Now, Microsoft has faced milder declines, benefiting from the artificial intelligence tra trade trend on Wall Street and being OpenAI's largest shareholder.